Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the Army of Two run a legendary Iron Man, mostly unmodded uh, version of the game, where we are limiting ourselves to a squad size of two. Is it even possible to do that? I have no idea. However, today we're going to look into uh, the mission in South Africa. My conscientiousness has won over my greed, so we're going to do an easy mission instead of a moderate mission, and uh, we're going to attempt it with our highest level characters, namely Renman and uh, Zirkim. I've chosen Renman because I think that uh, with um, double movement um, we will have an advantage on the sabotage transmitter part of the mission. Uh, let's talk a little bit about sabotage transmitters and why that is extremely difficult for this sort of run that we're doing. Um, normally the game assumes that you do have four to five players at this point in the game, um, at the later stages even six, so effectively getting rid of the transmitters is uh, something that only one of the characters uh, in the group needs to do. Um, that character continuously, so to speak, um, uses um, action points in order to do that. Uh, since uh, we only have two characters uh, though in the group, instead of having the entire remaining group of four to five characters left over to fight against aliens, for us it's only one person and one person only. So super hard uh, mission type. I wasn't, super, I wasn't really excited uh, when I saw that we had that mission type. But what can you do? We've lost every single other mission, so might as well lose this one here. You will see me often aggressively charging in, because there is really only so much you can do. Nice. We, by the way, found the first transmitter and we found an enemy pack. Well, that's a pretty decent start. Oh, we even found a second transmitter. That is interesting. Okay, let's move up as far as we can. Cool. Both of them are standing right next to the transmitter. That's the good news. Which means we can engage them from high ground even. And kill the transmitter at the same time. Pretty solid start. Let's go. Okay, good enough, good enough. Time for some solid blade mastering. That's still half cover. Yep, 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 very good. Okay, we know that there is another transmitter over here. It's good. Like it. Heading there now. Because Renman uh, can kill this transmitter whilst we need to continue to move to move up. And with our stock, we're going to kill him a hundred percent. Of course, the game is tempting us to get some loot. But I know better than to take that temptation.
Our main challenge is if we're going to waste any time doing uh, something other than charging in like madman is going to end very bad for us. Hmm. Do I feel like we can already advance to here? Good question. It's, it's a difficult call because um, we know that there are three packs and the second pack will most likely be around this area somewhere. And we really don't want to get ourselves caught with the pens down. Okay. Okay. I think we're good on uh, on the timer for now. We're actually pretty pretty good. We up the timer by one. We know there is another timer back here. Interesting. So since we're solid on the timer, Since we're solid on the timer, I'm wondering like what the right play is going to look like. Probably going to hit two of them just to deal the most potential damage, right? Chance of killing one of them. And let's reload at the same time. We actually have enough time. Um, to have an, to have a firefight here so reloading need to get rid of uh, the sector rather fast fortunately didn't kill this guy Gosh, of course now the anti-virus scanner uh, shows up. Okay, back in the game. So this here could be a potential one-shot. That's another good uh, option. I think we're going to go with the sector actually. Hmm... He's probably going to mind spin. Yeah, let's let's erase the, uh, that option. Okay, we're going to get a shot. Uh, that that is not a question, but we can kill both of them. Relatively easy. And we got ample time. So... We know there is another timer over here. We 
We killed this one. This one's still active, so might as well can uh, be able to kill it. With a stock attached, we can kill this guy here, 100% chance. Thus removing the overwatch. And with our blade master, we can actually reload, which is great. Saves us some uh, time. Action economy is good. Going to play it a bit risky here, so bear with me for one second. On the move. We aren't seeing any aliens. It's actually more important for us to prevent the network separation and get a good position. That's one. That's two. Going to kill this one here. And I'm going to blade attack this one next so that we're having a very solid position. Back to four. Haven't heard anything about alien movement, which is strange, I might say. Okay, we can still hit it from there. Mm. I guess I'm tempted. I mean, from here to here, oh, that's so good. The last pack is anyways inside of the rooms. So I'm 99% sure about it. We do have a grenade. The grenade could explode this part here and basically let us slip in. Could also just stand in front of the door. Probably move there in one turn. All right, let's go. Getting into solid position. We're not picking up any more of those relays. That's all the time we're going to get, Commander. Normal movement. How far could we go? Hmm. I think we need to open. Objective in range. Okay, which almost tells me the last pack needs to be here. It's always in one of the two rooms. So we know that the pack is there. If I was here. If I would end my movement here. No, I can't do it in one turn. Okay, let's try again. Okay, let's try again. I'm just trying to see how far. No, I wouldn't, I exactly wouldn't be able to move there. Ah, too bad. Okay, the other option is to explode this part here. Another option is to just move into 
this portion here. Let me see something else. If I was to stand here, I would get to there. If I would be standing here, I would barely make it. Okay. Which tells me, although it's usually not a good idea to stand in the open, since this here isn't triggering anything and I could close the door in case something would have triggered, we're going to overwatch, now. reload, and overwatch, and next turn we're going to plant the C4. <laughs> Look at us. Of course. Well, interestingly enough, our Overwatch really did not trigger. This here will be a 100% kill, because we already hit him once. Reloading. Kill. And I think this here is a very solid position, full cover, he can't move to here, because he would be in line of sight, so he's going to put himself somewhere here. Um, he's not going to flank us, and I'm pretty sure that we can use the shotgun to kill this guy. Alright. Yeah, he shoots into full cover. Menace one five, they're about to disconnect the transmitter. This is our last chance. <sighs> Let's see, maybe that doesn't trigger. Good. It doesn't. Hello there. We're not picking up any other contacts. Get those charges deployed. <laughs> we really made it. Unbelievable. Signal confirmed. Export charges <laughs> Can't believe that is happening. Flawless mission. Operation on Holy Grail. For years, these radicals have threatened the union between humanity and the elder. Today, with the destruction of vital infrastructure, they would now threaten our very way. Of Cool, we got a couple of promotions, I like it. Sure, so, uh, I like the immunity to overwatch uh, shots. That'll give us way more options to charge in. Phantom and Shadow Strike are also really nice, so that's good. Uh, both of them are actually okay. I don't believe that we're going to work a lot with uh, suppression, to be honest. Because with only two people in the group, um, I don't see how that is going to be a thing. Might want to use demolition. In some rough cases, I could see us use it when we are running out of grenades. So both of them for the two-man run are, they are, don't get me wrong, they are excellent abilities, but for the two-man run, they are actually not insane abilities. Countered a dark event, that's good. Got the intel, that's even better. And 
I'd like to do some uh, visiting of the training center. So we got our first sergeants. Covering fire. Hmm. We got a lot of soldier APs here, specifically because Renvin is a genius and gets a lot of AP. Um, Zirkim, on the other hand, gets average amounts of AP. And we would have two slots here for him as well. Since I want to continue with the Zirkim, I think what we are going to do is we're going to use our mod, um, the only one uh, that I have installed, the respec mod, um, the I am a, the commander, because guardian and covering fire bows are definitely not the ones that we would want. So let me show you how it's done. Uh, we can basically respec here. You would see um, what he would be getting. Um, so later he would get Dead Eye and Serial. Um, he's currently um, having Guardian and it lets you now respec for two um, AP. It doesn't grant you the ability, it just like replaces the slot and it allows you any kind of compatible um, uh, ability. Uh, the reason for those of you who are now watching this and haven't seen the uh, initial I introduction why am i using this mod when i'm kind of claiming it's a no modded run uh, this is just preventing me from starting over and over and over again until i got a decent combination of abilities now for the two-man run what are the things that are actually uh, relevant things that are actually relevant is uh, the number of damage that you can um, dish out uh, so the number of shots that you can take rapid fire for instance is excellent uh, the other thing that is uh, relevant is how many actions you can get so death from above is absolutely phenomenal and um, how far you can move respectively how your defense can look like so i'm a big fan of untouchable as well because with only two people on the battlefield we will be in many many situations where we're taking fire and untouchable is kind of blocking at least that one shot um, i want to start with death from above because death from above with the correct positioning allows me to take more actions and when we're using him more regularly i think death from above is actually one of the better abilities um, also it i think only costs 10 ap if i'm not mistaken so we're going to switch that in you can now say accept and you see we lost two ability points and uh, death from above would now cost us 10 ability points to actually skill which i'm gladly um, going to pay so our XCOM points are almost gone, but we now got Death from Above on uh, Zirkim, which is a very strong ability for him uh, to, to have extra attacks. Uh, looking at Renman, okay, we got Covering Fire here. That's respec, Covering Fire. And the question is really, what, what do we want to have? Death from Above is an excellent ability uh, as well. Uh, Zalvo, by the way, for him also uh, an interesting ability if we were to um, uh, get an additional turn because then he can throw uh, his grenade. But since he's only having one grenade, I think I'm not going to go for it. Um, uh, Blast padding, by the way, also highly underrated as well as Shredder. Uh, both of uh, those could, could help with him as well. I also like Rupture. So there are a lot of good abilities. Uh, but at the moment, when we have no equipment or whatsoever, I think Death from Above is kind of the way to go for us um, because we need... Uh, extra actions. The other option could be Chain Shot, to be honest. But I think Chain Shot costs us 25 uh, ability points, which we currently don't have. Um, the reason why I've and uh, Serial is also a great option. Um, both of uh, them are good. Uh, chain Shot, because we would actually be able to kill um, uh, more difficult uh, enemies. Uh, Shredder is probably also a really, really good ability. Um, so yeah, after careful consideration, I think it's either Death from Above or Chain Shot. Uh, in the absence of knowing how many ability points Chain Shot actually costs, I think it is 25. Um, we're going for Death from Above because I actually want to skill it. Um, which you can see, he's now at 12. 
and if we're skilling it he's down to one uh, so both of them now have a pretty decent first um, uh, first extra ability that they are uh, that they have skilled we have limited options to get to high ground yet but whenever we are in high ground i think that uh, these abilities should help us quite a lot there are supplies which is helpful and let's continue making contact we still have supplies over here Uh, let's also see what we would do next. I mean, we would clear the alien debris here after the resistance ring. So we don't need... Well, we could use... Actually, we could use some supplies, I suppose. So let's get the 150 from the drop. Because currently we don't have a, uh, any supplies. And just getting a med kit or a flashbang... A flashbang would have been really nice against the sector. Commander, we have a priority. We're tracking the alien's progress. Good. Avatar. We now got the Avatar project. They finished what they've started. I can't say that I'm excited to see that. Not at all. Um but yeah, it was expected. Well, look at that. Our resistance ring is ready we could upgrade it for an additional resistance order which we currently do not need yeah we don't we do not have enough engineers at the moment i wish we really could um put another engineer in here but for the time being it unfortunately we, we can't do it so having the resistance ring is excellent because uh, now we can regularly do the missions having an upgraded one is even better I like it but we currently don't have the staff to pull it off so we need additional engineers and um, scientists Got 185 supplies. Hello, Commander. If we were to build items, I think the med kit would actually make sense. Or the flashbang grenade. Both of them wouldn't be the worst investment ever. Must have been pretty cushy working with Advent, living in the colonies. Like most people, I wanted to believe that the alien. We're continuing to make contact. And there we go, experimental weapons, which should give us the Hunter's Axe. Also, frost, uh, frost Bomb is also not too bad. And look at that, that's perfect. Well, that's actually really, really good. Inspired Magnetic Weapons means we have half the days. Um, so, there's no question what we're going to uh, take now. 33 days for inspired weapons. The game helps us to, to progress. That means we need to uh, um, survive one more month before we can upgrade the weapons. That's actually pretty good. I like it. Wow, look at this. Got a promotion. And got a promotion for Dragonova as well. Our friends in the resistance have helped to pinpoint the location of our missing soldier. Commander, we've confirmed the position of the soldier being held captive by the chosen. We now have an opportunity to launch a rescue operation. Alright, we could get Praetor Mox back. Let's look at our um, at our um, potential missions. I'm specifically looking for promotions at that time. 
I like the promotion here. 14 days is a lot, but getting Templars, I anyways wanted to have the Templar. So this is most likely going to be our first mission. Very, very great um, opportunity for us. We are freshly promoted. So if we were to put Renman in here and Zirkim, Zirkim being the guy who's supposed to quote unquote carry um, this run, that is actually not too bad. Yeah, and we would get a Templar, which I would want to use. Originally, I wanted to, before uh, Roby kind of got uh, injured for 60 days, I wanted to go with the Templar plus Roby as uh, the main team. So uh, that's still on my bucket list. But having both of them already promoted means maybe we need to uh, use them also a bit more. So here we go, begin the action for them. Likewise, the look at our new what's it going to be sniper okay well i guess i'm okay with the sniper but i'm not particularly intrigued yet uh roby still is uh, is injured once he's back uh, that's a great start. And Dragonova finally gets the remote start ability. Yes, please. We unfortunately don't have enough uh, extra uh, points. Uh, she take a more flexible approach to training than traditional soldiers. Can often learn multiple new abilities does have three hidden XCOM abilities but not at her current rank well with the remote start ability we're good to go I think with Dragonova generally we're good to go so question that I would ask myself is if we were to get um, Praetal Mox back the mission is still is currently there whom would we take uh, with uh, Eltrana. Hmm. It's actually a good question. Probably go with um, Edgar Elliot Poe. Just to level him as well. And it's a gratis mission. If we fail, there's really nothing lost. Other than Praetor Mok still being in captive. So I think the next mission will be a, a duo mission with the two of them. Knowing that these two are going to go in, let me think. Let me think. Um, Just give the word and I'll get started, Commander. I guess. Having a flashbang grenade as a starter is a solid, very solid choice. Yeah, we're going to go for that. Okay. And probably since we do get another 150, I'm toying with the idea, and we get um, alien debris here, toying with the idea of how much would we get here? 80. Yeah, I think we can afford a med kit. We would still have 150 left over after the clearing of the alien debris. So yeah. All right, let me um, get ready for this mission and we're going to see that mission in our next episode of this beautiful beautiful run thank you so much for watching and don't forget to give it a like and a thumbs up see you very soon